guys, Natasha Tessier. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I want to talk about picking the right agent when moving to Texas. Hey guys, I'm Natasha Tessier. Thank you so much for tuning in. I was born and raised in the great city of Houston. I keep moving further and further out. I've lived in Houston in the Memorial area. I've lived in Tomball. We're now in Montgomery. We keep going further out the more the city grows. But born and raised here, I know so much about the city and I would love to help you with your move across the country. It's pretty much what I do every day now. My whole business is helping people relocate. So if I can help you hit the subscribe button that helps my channel to keep going and helps me to get everything edited and ready to go for you guys and reach out anytime days nights weekend i am my own agent i'm a solo agent i just realized i was the top agent in the state of texas for my brokerage which is pretty cool because there's i think 15,000 of us or something for the month of april so i've just been grinding and grinding doing the best that i can but Today, I wanna to talk to you about the steps of picking your right agent, because I think it's really important and it's it's sad for me to see people frustrated and angry with all that stuff. And it's a big, big decision. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is I'm gonna talk about teams versus a solo agent. So everybody tells me, you should start a team, you should start a team, and there are days that I want to, but I really like the personal connection with people. And so if I start a team and every call I get gets rerouted and rerouted, then I don't ever meet those people. You don't meet me. You just work with people on my team and then I would take a referral fee. So figure out if you wanna be with somebody who's on a huge planned team and then, you know, sometimes the team lead is doing YouTube or paying for Zillow or whatever. And then those agents aren't really even making as much because the team lead is taking a big portion of that. Now, for me to do this, I've had to hire help. So you will one day talk to Megan. She's wonderful. She's the backbone of my business. We are kind of polar opposites when it comes to <laughs> personalities. I am the go, go, go. My brain is often all over the place. I'm sure she has a hard time following me, but she is my spreadsheet, take care of everything, you know, keeps me organized person. So. You will hear from her. She does a lot of my follow-up. She will email you. Her name's Megan Harrison. And that's one of the ways I'm able to do so much business. And then the other way is I have showing assistance. So let's say you have a three-day trip here. And you know, the first day I often tell people drive around by yourself. It's so much to see. And then the second day, you know, I might go out with you or one of my showing assistants. But when you finalize an area and you need my opinion or you narrow it down, it will be me. However, I have showing people to help me get people into homes. So that is the second thing. So you want to make sure that you have an agent that knows the area and is I prefer individual, but maybe you prefer a team. It just depends. Okay, so for number two, you need somebody who knows the area. So there's several great YouTubers out there. And let me tell you, they are great at marketing. They, one of them told me the other day, they're spending a hundred thousand on all these amazing videos and all this stuff. I don't do any of that. I'm usually by myself with, or my son, with my little, you know, thing that holds my phone taking video. So the thing is, is that some of those YouTubers are not from here. One of them in particular just moved here two years ago. So when you find them, you know, pronouncing words wrong, it's kind of funny for us Texans to watch them because they don't know the area. Make sure you have somebody who knows the area. There's zoning you need to worry about. There's flooding you need to worry about. There's different neighborhoods have different school districts within the same neighborhood. Which way do you want your house to face? I just was with new construction people and really important. So they went out on their own yesterday and then I met them today. And one thing I wanted to relate to them is they were thinking of building $450,000 house. Okay, so each neighborhood has like different sections of builders and different qualities within those sections. So like in Audubon, that's where we were, there's an entry level section and those homes sell from 250 to maybe 350. Well, and those builders too, they're a step down from the next level up. So that's an entry level. You don't want to be the most expensive house in that section. That's not gonna be great for resale. So the next section over is a little bit higher end builder. So, you know, you've got more like Perry, Highland Drees kind of people. So I would rather you buy your 450 surrounded by $800,000 homes than I would to be the nicest home on the block. So 
little things like that that you want people you know want your agent to know about what i mean where are the schools there's new schools going in audubon what is magnolia school district like i have kids in the montgomery school district i've had kids in the tomball school district you know all those things are really really important you need to know the areas and you need to have an agent who knows what they're doing in that the next thing is i'm going to talk to you about negotiating skills now I would say this is probably my biggest strength. I am very sweet. I think most people would agree, but I am very strong and I am very protective of my clients. You can talk to my lenders, you can talk to Megan. Like I, even my title company knows that I, I don't want anything going wrong. Like I'm just, I like to make sure they are very well taken care of. So you want somebody, and I'm just gonna give you examples of what has happened just this month with my buyers, because it's been really cool what I've been able to negotiate for them. Okay, one family under contract na right now in Wood Forest, we are contracted at 623. We just got, and I, I believe it's 10 grand in closing costs that they're getting from the seller. And the house just appraised for 650. So they're going into that home with like 30,000 or more in equity before they even move into the house. Another client bought a home on, on an acre in Montgomery. They paid 585 and it came in, I think it was either 610 or 615. I don't remember all the exact numbers, but again, like another 30,000 in equity. We just closed this week. Very cool. So my clients went downtown, put a townhouse under contract and I knew it was not gonna appraise. Like I ran the comps and I'm, I told the client, I'm like, there's no way this house is gonna sell for this, this townhouse. So we get, we go through it, they still wanted it. So we go through, we get the offer accepted, we go through the contract. It comes in $22,000 low on the appraisal. Well, I kind of just stood up to the agent and I said, you know, do you have other comps that you would like me to share with the appraiser so we can try to get it up, which I knew there weren't other comps. So I asked the agent, you know, do you have any? She sends single family homes to the appraiser. Well, I knew that wasn't gonna work because it's not a single family home, it's a townhouse. They're not gonna use those as comparables. The appraiser would change nothing. The seller comes down 20,000 to meet the price. Again, making sure you have somebody who is strong, gonna be in your corner, know what they're doing and fight for you. Okay, my last example is my client, we're closing April 24th. We have a house under contract for 343. It just came in at 380. Now it needs work. But still that appraiser walked that house, saw all that and still appraised it. So it comes in almost 50 grand higher. That's like, it makes, I don't make any extra money when I do that. It's just, I, I'm pretty competitive with myself and I like to, you know, get them the best deal. So make sure you have a strong negotiator. You don't, I mean, you don't want somebody who's weak and is not gonna fight and has to know every part of that contract. There's foundation fees that people have to pay even on new construction. Who's gonna pay that, the builder or you? It's oftentimes half of 1% of the house. So, hey, you're buying $700,000 house, that's $3,500 more. Have somebody who knows how to look at a fee sheet from a builder's lender and compare it to a regular fee sheet from a regular lender because a lot of times the builders say, oh yeah, we're gonna give you $10,000 in closing costs, but they charge you for it. So you really, really have to have somebody who knows how to negotiate, what they're looking at and how to get you the best deal. Now, if you're going to list your home, if you're watching locally and you're gonna list your home, you need somebody with marketing skills. You need somebody with a YouTube channel. They have to have good social media. They have to have aerial. They have to do video walkthrough. Like when I do some of my luxury houses, I have to do a whole video of me talking about the neighborhoods and everything that neighborhood has to offer. But then I have to get that videographer to go out and do the lakes and the stables and all the stuff because how would somebody know from out of state what that neighborhood's gonna look like without seeing all that? Don't hire somebody to sell your house that's gonna go in with their cell phone and take pictures and charge you, you know, nothing. I mean, you might as well do it yourself. So make sure they have good marketing skills and they are good at listing your home and getting it out there because first impressions we know are everything. The next thing I'm gonna tell you is make sure you connect with the agent. So you may hate my personality and that's okay, but you wanna connect with the agent. You want somebody that you can know, like, and trust to help you through this process. There are times in a transaction when things get really stressful or people get upset. 
you need to connect with that agent and make sure that you get along well with them. Do they answer their text? Do they answer their phone? Do they reply? So, you know, if you call and they don't call you back or never answer, they're probably not your agent. I actually am doing a rental right now for a friend and these, this couple, really sweet couple reached out and they were like, hey, we really want to rent the house. We just have a little bit lower credit score than the accepted. So I went to the landlord and I was like, hey, do you want to consider them? Yes, we do. Well, she sends me this message and she's like, we've been trying for like two months to reach out to people on Zillow realtors and stuff and nobody will call back they have to communicate with you this is very stressful so I always tell my client I mean my clients know how much I answer the phone and text sometimes it's a little too much but you need somebody who's gonna be on top of things so right now like I'm booking a golf day for one of my clients out at Bentwater and I'm gonna do a video on all the golf neighborhoods because there's so many cool ones here but it's my job to go in find the Bentwater lady you know call her, make sure that my client knows that she's gonna be taken care of. So when you get that inspection report and you have a deadline by five o'clock because your option period is ending, is the agent gonna be available to negotiate on your behalf? I'm also doing one deal where the other agent would not respond to us on time. So there's very, time is of the essence in real estate. And when your option period ends at five, there's no way for us to go back and say, oh, and by the way, can you add that or whatever? You can't do that. So anyway, I hope all this makes sense. There's a lot to think about when you're moving across the state. I have agents in Austin. I have them in San Antonio, up in Dallas, McKinney area, all over the state that I network with that I know will do a good job. So if you need a referral, please don't hesitate to reach out and say, hey, who's your go-to agent in Fort Worth or whatever. If you need somebody out of state too, I have a lot, we have a national brokerage, so I have a lot of connections there. If you decide, hey, Texas isn't it, we're gonna go somewhere else. So reach out anytime, but be sure to pick a good agent that'll help you. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, days, nights, weekends. I love what I do and I'd love to help you. Have a blessed day.